golf line, golf line. Calling on the golf line for your swing, for your swing. Golf line, golf line. Can't you call it on the golf line with Jay Larson? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of the Golf Line Podcast with Jay Larson. I am Jay Larson, your host. I'm so excited to be here, you guys. It's been a long time since I've been doing a podcast. Some of you may know me from the Crab Feast podcast and then the Throughline podcast and now the Golf Line podcast. Some of you may know me through stand-up comedy. Some of you just may know me as Random Guy. Some of you may be here because of Eric Anders. Like, no one really knows how to pronounce his last name. Um, some of you might be fans of the Connor Moore show and the golf sketches that I was able to put out with those guys. Uh, either way, I'm glad you're here. Uh, you know, Eric had this idea about doing a podcast and he asked me if I want to come on board and then Jojo, our producer, my producer, we got together and we kind of formatted the show and what you're going to see is we're going to talk a little golf at the top of the show. We're going to take calls from people. Sometimes we'll talk to people sometimes i'll comment on it and then uh, every now and then we're going to mix in an interview you know what i mean of course this is our pilot episode we're going to come with the big guns we're going to come with the big guns today i'm going to start off the show telling you a little bit about what my golf background is then i'm going to take a couple calls i'm going to we have a story from this one clown wait till you hear this guy uh I don't know if we, you know, this is the great thing about golf is you don't ever have had to have golfed with this person, but you will know exactly what was going on with this cat. And then Nate Bargatze, in my opinion, it's got to be top five comedians working today. He, what he does is in comedy as a comedian, I watch Nate and I just am in the back of the room and I'm baffled and I'm just like, how, how does he do this? How does he do it? It's so simple. It's so smart. Yet so dumb. He's so dumb. Um, I'm kidding. He's just great at what he does. And I'm excited to have him on the show today. Um, For those of you who are wondering, yes, I'm a stand-up comedian and director and writer. I act sometimes, but I'm not good. I'm just not good at it. You know what I mean? Most people have one job. I happen to have four or five, and I'm just not good at one of them. You know what I mean? I like it, but, you know, there are people who are, like, really good. I'd say in acting, I'm like a 22 handicap, right? Directing, I'm like a, I think, I'm like a, like a four. Writing, I'm like maybe a, maybe a 10 to 12, depending on the subject matter. Stand up, I'm like maybe an eight. That's what I am in golf right now. I'm like a 7.6. Anyway, as a kid, I grew up in a little town in Massachusetts, Stone of Massachusetts, home of Nancy Kerrigan. Don't sweat it. She's an Olympian. Um, They had a little nine-hole course in my town called Unicorn. People from other towns called it Canicorn. Uh, There was, if you don't know what Canicorn means, it means easy. Back in the day when they would do your groceries, you would get a can of corn to be on the top shelf, and they'd have a bag out, and they'd go, can of corn, and they would just drop it. It's like a baseball term. If it's a pop fly, it should be a can of corn. It should be easy. Anyway, we had one par five there. When I was a kid, I never took golf lessons. I didn't have clubs. The first clubs I had, my Aunt Rue, all right, great Aunt Rue, who died at 100. Was she? Yeah, 100. She lived to a C note. She gave me her old clubs when I was young. I used to hit my grandfather's clubs in the backyard. They were like wooden, like wooden, wooden driver and stuff. He was big into golf. So I always wanted to golf, but like getting to golf with a single mom. You think I'm like, I had a big backyard so I could hit golf balls back there. And every now and then I'd hit them into a house. What can you do? Um, but uh, I had those clubs. We wouldn't even go to Unicorn. They wouldn't let you out on Unicorn. Like if we showed up to go play Unicorn, like the way you got in line at Unicorn, you didn't call and make a reservation. There was this like ring that you would drop your ball in and it would sit there and then you'd go. But anyway, uh, Paul Leone, this kid in my town, when we got to like middle school, took me and another buddy out to, he was a member at the country club. It was Bear Hill Country Club, which was nine holes, but it had alternating tees on a bunch of holes. So it was 18. So like holes played different. It was a cool little course. They had a pool, tennis, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we went and played there. We played nine. I shot a 109, just to give you an idea. Then in high school, we started in sixth grade. We took intramurals golfs with Miss Murphy. 
Okay, Miss Murphy was a sixth grade teacher and she started intramural, so we'd all go out and play. It was really cool. And then when I was like in eighth grade, my Aunt Val got me some clubs at a yard sale. Okay, those were my clubs for a while. And then finally, when I was in college, I could afford to buy clubs. And I'm like, I'm not fucking around. I'm not fucking around. And I bought myself some big bursts. Not Berthas, T H bursers b u r s a r s 100 bucks knockoffs for big berthas i had the craziest slice of all time to the point where like i could hit a there was a tree on one hole it's like the seventh hole at unicorn pa four downhill and i would uh not really a hill i would the tree was on the left side of the fairway i would aim left of that tree and it would go out and come around and come back in at like a right angle onto the fairway I was still decent because I always played sports as a kid, but wasn't great. College, we started playing some buddies. I played on the baseball team in college. And then when I moved out to L.A. for the first six months, I played a lot of golf, just like learning the city. And I got down like I didn't keep a handicap or anything like that. At that point, when I moved, my buddy from who was on the golf team in high school who played baseball with me gave me his old Mizunos. Those were my clubs. I played those Mizunos for years until I could. When I shot my half hour Comedy Central special, what's up, 10 years ago, 2011, I used some of that money to buy myself my first set of new clubs ever. And I can't even, why can I not remember? Oh, they were also Mizuno, like not cavity backs. They were like, they weren't blades, but they were close. Anyway, then I got rid of those, got King Cobra blades. And uh, then I finally moved on to where I am now. I'm playing Ping Eye Blades. Boom. I have never hit a hole in one. And I don't even know if I've come close. Okay. I don't even know if I've come close. I played a like an eight right now, seven something, I guess. Not even close. Uh, I took my first golf lessons in my 30s. That was my ex-wife was a birthday gift one year. She got me 10 lessons. One of the coolest gifts I've ever got. Guy was a right. But uh, it was great to uh, get out there and get lessons. I uh, was never a country club guy, although I would love the country club life. And if I'm going to join a country club, you know what? I'm going to wait on that, and I'm going to do a whole thing on what I want out of a country club. And another rep. Not right now. Another episode. I was a caddy as a kid. Let me just tell you this. I have kids now, so I'm teaching my kids golf. You got to teach them. When we golf, I get the last tee time of the day at an executive nine-hole course. And if we get seven holes in, great. And I don't care where they hit. I just know that if it's in someone else's fairway and there's people coming down, I go, go grab it, bring it back. I'm not messing with people's. People are out there that are wanting to get some golf in. Don't get your kids all up in their shit. You know what I mean? Go to the range. Go to a putting green. Don't let them fuck up. You know. Anyway, um, I was a caddy. So I know all the rules. You know, I know what to do. And when I go out there with buddies, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I don't think if you walk across my line, it's going to affect my putt, but you just don't do it because it's etiquette. And there's something fun about following etiquette in golf. There's just something fun about it. There's something fun about going to a nice restaurant and being like, yeah, you just dress up a little. Or like if you go to like the ballet or a play, you don't wear a hoodie guy who was at the Nutcracker last Christmas. Um, and I play Pro V1s. I love golf. I love what it's all about. I love to have fun with it. My favorite thing about golf, guys and gals, is when you're out there and you can play with someone where you can talk about shots, but have fun. I like it when I'm with someone who's good and they're like, what are you going to do here? And I'm like, well, I'm going to hit a hooded four iron. I'm going to put the ball back in my stance and I'm going to take it just under the tree branches because of this shot, I'm in the trees and then put a cut on it so it comes back around and hopefully rolls up to the green. That's what I like to talk about. And then I'd be like, well, what do you do? And they were like, I'd maybe hit a punch nine to just get out to the fairway because I don't want to mess with that bunker up there. And I'm like, fuck that bunker, bro. Fuck it. Um, That's mean golf. Golf's a great uh, in comedy. There's a lot of people that golf. And it's great to get out there and you get, you know, I'll be honest. 18 holes is a long time. You know what I mean? Especially if you're playing with someone who doesn't play. Listen. Will I have a couple beers out there? Yeah. Will I smoke a joint once in a while? Rarely. 
Uh, my my round is going to have to be so bad. It's just I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that can just rip a joint and then just go crush 82. You know what I mean? That's not who I am. Uh, I like my focus. I like getting there early. I like hitting the range. I like knowing I don't need to hit a ton of balls. I just need to know that my I'm getting good off. Um, I'm good off the tee. Like my my driver is dialed in just for the round, or at least I know where it's at. You know what I mean? I think I could hit 18 balls and then know where my driver's at. And then I like to roll some putts just to get, you know what the thing is too, though? You roll putts and then on the third hole, someone's like, <laughs> the practice screams a little quicker. Why is a little quicker? I adjust. I adjust. Um, so golf is, guys. It's a game of adjustments, just like any sport. Um that's my history in uh, in golf. The shows, guys, we'll be talking golf. I'll be throwing comedy and I'll be throwing life lessons in. You know what I mean? So you guys got to call in. You're going to fuel the show. I mean, I'll take top of show. But if there's things you want me to discuss in a monologue format like I'm doing right now, call in 1-833-MY-GOLF-LINE. Leave your message. You want some advice, which we'll do today. You want to tell us a story, which we'll do today. Whatever it's going to be, just if it's golf related and it's fun and it's weird or crazy or interesting, whatever it is, everyone's idea of what's interesting and crazy is uh, a little different. You know what I mean? So what you might think is wild and crazy, we might be like, dude, get out more. Your idea of wild and crazy might be us being like, should we call the authorities because this person is fucked? Whatever it's going to be. You know what I mean? Um, so let's get into it. Okay. We got some calls this week. We had a lot of people once we launched. We had a lot of messages. We had like 52 voicemails. And uh, that was like before we had even. That was like, I don't know, three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And um, we narrowed it down. We took out some highlights. You know, we also don't want to inundate you with, with uh, you know, Anyone, whether you're short, long on your message, whatever, just be you. Be you. That's what this is all about. We just want people who enjoy golf and have stories, and we'll get into it. So let's go to the uh, let's go to the voicemails. Hey Jay, my name is Miles. I'm a twenty point two handicap. And uh, I'm just calling in to see if and when there is an appropriate time to go for the hero shot. I find myself most rounds in a situation where I can play it safe or I can try to get by by the skin of my teeth and cut a couple strokes getting through the trees. And time and time again, I do go for option number two there, which I know I shouldn't. So that being said, when should I go ahead and go for the hero shot? Miles, first of all, first of all, who in the world, Miles? First of all, this is what I love about this guy. I know I love him already. I know I'd be out there golfing with him because he's a 20.2. No, no one's, dude, listen, once you're over uh, a 10, you don't need the points. You know what I mean? We know what you are. And when you're in the 20s, bro, 20.2. Do you think any of us out there are going to be like, should we give him 21? Nah, he's 0.2. You're a 20, bro. You're a 20. And I love you because this is what it is. There are guys out there, you're keeping an index and you're a 20.2, so you care. You're saying the 0.2 because you care. Because that means maybe you were a 24 six months ago. Either way, you care. And I love you for it, okay? I really do. I think it's great, dude. And I I already hear potential and promise in that message. You know what I mean? And also, I know that if you're a 20.2, you're always going for the hero shot, bro. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a 20.2. Uh, I'm just kidding. I love that you you said, first of all, we all know that you're up against the hero shot every round. We know you are, brother. You're a 20.2. My buddy Rye from home, he we still we're forty six years old and we still talk to each other on the phone like we're twelve. He'll call me, he's like, Oh brother, Bo Sox, second place, what are they doing? And I'll be like, All right. Um 
And then I call him, what are you going to do, brother? Fantasy football. Um, this is what I think about the hero shot. I think it starts with your day. You know what I mean? How are you feeling? What is the, what is the situation? What's your score? I take every – it is really hard. First of all, I'm a stand-up comedian, okay? I moved to Los Angeles with $3,200 in my pocket and $22,000 in student loan, and I knew one person in Los Angeles. That was in 2000. I bought a Nissan, like a 78 Nissan in San Diego for $700 that a guy hustled me at a parking lot like of a Safeway, right? 700 took me down to 2500 drove it up to L.A., never test drove it. On the freeway, that thing was shaking. It died after a week in L.A., all right? I had to do first and last month's rent. That was 800 That took me down to 1700 I had to get a new car, which took me down. I, I literally bought a used car for 1800 bucks. They let me pay installments. I had to put 500 down. That took me down to 1200 Then I had to buy furniture for my home, okay, and food. All right, so for me, my life is a hero shot, bro. Bruh. Now, every now and then, do I just punch out? Yeah, but rarely, because I told you, I got that hooded four Ryan out of the woods. I can punch anything out, but if you're dealing with water or going through the trees, I'm always looking for that. I don't believe trees are 90% air or whatever that, I don't, that is not me. I know if I get through, I'm lucky. If it's like a tight corner. Now, normally, <laughs> I'm not in that situation, bro. But if it's like I'm trying to go over water and I'm is it like a flop shot? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Because you know what? I'm I'm doing now, if I'm like on the thirteenth hole and I'm two over, no. I'm not going for it. Unless I've been grooving everything and I step up. Normally what happens for, for me is I step up to a shot, I look at it, I see it in my head. You know what I mean? I'm like bag of vance, bro. I see it, I'm like, boom, there it is, I go, and that's it. And you deal with the consequences. But if it's going to blow me up to an eight, which, by the way, you know, I don't know when the last time I had an eight was. I just like my blow ups. Here's the real problem. If you go hero shot and it doesn't work and then you go hero shot again, this is where you're going to start like killing yourself. Because if you're at a point that you're really keeping your score, even if you're at 20.2, you got to you got to start looking at the card and being like, do I really want an eight right now? Or do I just want to suck? Because the reality is guys and gals, we all know, we all know if we look back at our score, so you know what I do sometimes when I keep my score I, and I'm alone, I go score fairways, greens and regulation putts. And then I can look back And any time I'm on the fairway, it's a par or bogey or birdie. It's never a double bogey. You know what I mean? Unless you go in the drink, if there's water in front of the green, it's just never. Every time it's a green regulation, it's always a par or better. Always. You're never – just don't three-putt. If you three-putt, it's a bo- – you know, that's where it comes down to. So you got to practice all these different elements of your game and just, like, know ahead of time. Another thing, uh, my man, Miles, I think it was Miles, listen – Look at the look at you know every every course has got that 340 yard par four. Don't be a hero there, go bro, and go driver if you've been shanking it. Be smart there, like know where you can attack. You know, I used to tell this buddy of mine, I'm like, dude, play to your best shot off the tee. Like if you know it's a 340 yard hole and your best club is your eight iron and you hit it 150 and it's 380, you need 230. You don't need driver. Hit 230 off the tee. Set yourself up for that next shot. Um, anyway, Miles, thanks for the call, buddy. Keep us posted on uh, how you improve. Next call. Let's go to the messages. Jay, what's up? My name is Dandy Young. I'm from Alma, Michigan. I am playing the old tour action, Cleveland tour actions. That's the clubs I use. They're about 15 years old, way too old. I still use them. Here's my problem. I get inside 100 yards, swing normal, and it shanks straight right. I don't know what I'm doing. I need some help. We'll love to chat with you. Thanks. Bye. Sandy. (laughs) First of all, did you guys hear in the background? There was like someone going, yeah, you're on the first day. Like he's at a golf course. This is what I love about golf is we're crazy. We're, We're addicts. You can't, we just, we need it. We need it. You know what I mean? It's insane. He's there right now calling. God knows what he's doing. I mean, who knows what this guy's doing? Sandy. I also like anyone 
who's got like, you ever met a guy named Courtney? Love it. You ever met a guy named, uh, who's that director? Ugh. Who's that director? Glass has been in a ton of stuff. Director Michael Clayton. Um, Jojo, do you know? Can you look that up? Yeah, it's gonna kill me. He's got a like. He's got a what? Michael would, Clayton. It's just Michael Mann, right? Michael Mann. He didn't do Michael Clayton. No, Sidney Pollock. Sidney, who's the guy that just called in? Sandy. San- <laughs> Sandy. Sand. By the way, Sandy from Greece. Sandy. Anyway, um, I just like names like that. Sandy, let's just talk about it, bro. You you told us in the message what the problem is. You, you're working with 15-year-old clubs. I think we all know golf is something where technology is definitely helping the game. You know what I mean? Like, what are, what are people doing in basketball? The ball hasn't changed. The court's the same size. You know, the rim is always going to be 10 feet. There's always going to be a backboard. You know, like technology isn't going to improve basketball. Baseball, it improved it. They also just juiced the balls. Soccer, tech, what technology? Now, you're training and like training facilities, sure. But golf, tennis. Remember the, 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 the rackets that like McEnroe and Martina Navratilova were out there swinging? I mean, it's it's insane by the way martina navratilova has won like 53 grand slams she won like 20 something single grand slams and then was like "Ah, i'm just gonna do doubles till i'm like 50 and dominates um so one i would look into your clubs but when it comes down to 100 you know what's crazy it's probably something you don't work on i don't know if you guys know rory scovell he's a comedian and actor and uh he will be on the podcast at some point but like he crushes off the tee, like insane. He hits a ball off the tee, and you're just like, are those balls? What are you hitting? I mean, he hits crazy balls anyway. He's always like on some gimmick ball. But like when it gets into around 100, he, it's not like he's shanking like you're saying you're shanking. It's just his game isn't there because he's not working it. So one, are you working your 100 in? Are you working it? Two, are you setting yourself? Why are you always 100 in? You know what I mean? Are you getting off the tee to a point like I know – my best club in my bag is an eight iron. I hit it 155. Why? Because as a kid, where I used to get off the tee would land me at 155. And that's like what I've become comfortable with. The one club, if I had to grab a club out of my bag, would be my eight iron. And I love it. Tin cup, it's a seven iron. Lawson, eight iron. So that's the first thing I would ask. I'm not a golf coach, so I don't know. But if you're shanking everything right and you're righty, I don't know. Are you... Is the ball way back in your stance and, you know, you're or you're are you just swinging your hips out way too early? I don't know. You might have the yips. You you need to just I don't know. It doesn't sound like it's honestly. Your your maybe your focus is off. I really I can't I'd have to see it. But all I know is I would go to the range, preferably one that has grass at the range, and I would just sit with a bucket and my hundred yard club. You know, for me, that's a 50 degree gap and I would get a hundred balls and I would just start hitting like normal. I just start hitting and see if you're shanking. Then I'd move the ball up in my stance. Then I move it back in my stance. Then I would hit it off a tee. I would just do every little thing again because I'm not a golf coach and I'd slow down my swing, go to 80%. You know, like sometimes when I'm off, especially like long irons, I hit my long irons for shit. I, I cannot hit a four iron straight. I don't have a three iron. I'm, I, I gave up on that years ago. When I see dudes with two irons, I'm just like, you know what? Fuck off. Okay. You shouldn't be here. Um, you should be on a tour somewhere, dude. Why aren't you on the corn ferry tour, dude? Um, so I would try those things, bro. And know that golf, golf is cyclical. You're hitting your driver. You're shitting your long irons. You're hitting your wedges. You can't get off the tee. You know, that's the way it goes. So that's what I would do. Just work it. I would work it. Um, and I appreciate the call. As always, one eight three three my golf line. Call in, guys. See what's happening. You see what Miles is doing. You see what Sally's doing. Sandy. Uh, Sandy! Here's what I say. Um, we're going to take this next call. We're not going to play the voicemail. We listened to it, JoJo and I, and I said... Um, I said, bro, let's just get that story straight up. JoJo, should we play like 
10 seconds up. Let's play a little. No, we don't need to. Let's just go right into it. Let's uh, let's get him on the horn. Let's make the call, JoJo. Hello. What's up, man? How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. And yourself? I'm great, buddy. I'm great. It's uh, Friday afternoon. It's 1230 in Los Angeles. Where are you located? You're in Canada, but where are you? I'm in... Uh... I'm in uh, New Brunswick, Canada, so it's 4.30 here. So I just finished my sweet federal job off for the weekend. Love your style, dude. Love your style. So here's the deal, man. You left a story on the voicemail that me and JoJo and anyone else over there that had heard it was just like, I immediately I was like, we got to, I want to talk this story through from start to finish with you. Okay. So are you cool? Like, let's just do this. I know you left the voicemail, but I want everyone to kind of experience this at the same time as me are you cool walking us through this uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a story that's kind of been been trapped in the back of my mind and you know being so over the last few years and getting back into golf the last two years it's kind of nice to to share that kind of one of those ridiculous stories i have so i'm, I'm all for it all right do it so this start this was for you this was five years ago this happened no this is uh i'm 29 so this is eight years ago I was 21, yeah, eight years ago now. And you're sober now, so I'm guessing back then you weren't sober. I, no, so I, I, I wasn't sober. I've been sober now for four years. Nice. Um, I kind of went through my you know nightmare years as a, as a teenager in early 20s and, and kind of had some issues, obviously, by that story you can tell. And, and I had quit golfing when I was 19 or 20-ish. Um, sold my clubs and everything. And, and this kind of, this, this, in this instance came up just based on like my reputation with somebody's brother I knew uh, who knew I was a good golfer and, and he offered me like a couple hundred bucks and free drinks. All right. But you weren't just a guy who was good at golf. You were, you were working towards becoming a pro golfer. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my, that was my goal. Like I, my dream obviously was always to be a pro golfer up in Canada. Hockey is obviously a big part of it as well. So I, I had to do a balancing act, but golf was always my number one uh, love, like my true love. I was down to about a scratch, a plus one when I was, when I was 16, 17. Um, I was working at a golf course. I wanted to do my PGA and be a, a club pro. And, and that was my, my dream. So that's kind of where I was until I turned 19 and I went off the rails. Okay. So let me ask you this real quick. Um, when you were in high school, you're a plus one, which is insane in your room. Did you have a Wayne Gretzky poster on your wall, or did you have a Mike Weir poster on your wall? <laughs> I had a Nicki Minaj poster, man. <laughs> I love it. So you're a plus one in high school, and now you're 19, you're out of high school, obviously. Yeah. You know, I think we all go through uh, starting to drink and experiment with drugs, but for some people, especially in the addiction world, it's just isn't ever going to be something that people can balance. I think that's kind of where you were at, obviously, being sober now four years. Congratulations, by the way. What were your clubs and how, where did you sell them and how much did you sell them for? Okay. Yeah, so I, I, had, a, I had a set of mirror blades, fitted mirror blades, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the exact model. This was a few years ago, so I don't remember what the model was called, but they are left-handed fitted mirrors, which is a hard thing to find. Um, you know, full Vokey wedges, pitching wedge down to, down to lob wedge. Titleist up in the upper bag and 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 Scotty Cameron. I sold them for for six hundred and fifty dollars total uh, to some guy off of uh, Kijiji, which is like our Craigslist in Canada. And I used that money promptly to go buy you know drugs and alcohol. Okay, first of all, I love that you six fifty for that set. I mean that set's got to be like five G's, but you're also a lefty, so I mean it's like finding someone that good that's a lefty that, like I said, isn't Mike Weir. Is going to be tough. It, it was, it was, uh, you know what? It's, it's, it was easier than you would have thought. Like, there's a, there's a, uh, us lefties, we stick together, especially like the lefties who are like kind of good. We stick together. So we know where to find a good club, even still to this day. Like, I can find myself some good used clubs down and back in the golf. Just got to know the right channel. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. I like it. Um, all right. So at this point, you're, you've sold your clubs, uh, and you're not golfing at all anymore. Your buddy calls you up. I got a couple hundred bucks and free drinks to come play. And like, what was like, like a member guest kind of thing? Exactly. Yeah. It was, always, it was my buddy's brother who was a, uh, like a finance guy in Toronto. And he was a member at a, at a really, at a private, really fancy course in, in the city. And he, uh, that was exactly, he called me up a couple hundred bucks, free drinks and food for the day. And then that was it. All right. And take us through it, baby. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he, he called me again. He only knew me because of I we had a I was kind of friends with his younger brother, 
uh, through golf, so he knew I was really good. So I was uh, I quit golf in 19 when I was about 2021. 20, that's when I sold everything off. Um, or kind of in that era. And then when I was 21, he called me and was like, Hey, I got this member guest. He was like 200 bucks or whatever. I'll get you to and from the course, free drinks, free food, everything like that. So I'm like, perfect. Help me in. Money is the only thing I thought and food. Cause at that point I was kind of struggling. Um, so I know a couple weeks before I, I was like, he texted me and was like, Hey, like you good. You can practice. I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm fucking dialed, bro. Like, I don't worry about me. I'm good. And, uh, and I didn't have clubs, obviously, so I went to, like, Goodwill and, and uh, like, Value Village, like, all these thrift stores, and I found this set of, like, shitty Mizuno cavity backs from three to nine iron, and, and I played with those and some Maxfly wedges of Wilson Putter and I think, like, that old TaylorMade three wood and some janky two iron. So I grabbed those and some, like, old ladies, like, floral bag. I wore my, my Catholic high school uniform shirt and a pair of uh, Dickies pants that I cut off into shorts. Um, wore that, worked my way down, you know, took, probably took a couple of hours. All right, hold on. Before, before, we, before we jump into the Adderall, I got to just pay respect to the fact that you, that you were like, Mizuno, yeah, you can deal with that. Those Wilson wedges, I think you said, or Maxfly, whatever it was, and then the TaylorMade, and then the floral bag, but you went with your high school shirt. It's not even like, listen, if anyone out there is wondering whether or not their friend has a drug or alcohol problem, if they show up to golf with a floral golf bag and their high school jersey and cut off dickies, chances are they have a problem, right? I think you could back me up on this. Oh, 100%. 100%. I couldn't okay, agree cool. more. And was there all right outside of the Adderall, which this your friend's brother didn't know about? Was there any part of him that saw you show up and be like, "Dude, are you all right?" Like, was there no part of him that was just like, "Oh man, what's up with this dude?" Well, I, I show yeah, he was. I think he started questioning from the beginning because I, I again private course Donald Ross design. Anyone from the area is going to know exactly what club I'm talking about. Um, you know, my shirt wasn't tucked in, didn't have a belt. I was wearing. I didn't have golf shoes. I didn't want to pay for golf shoes because you know money. And uh, I was wearing these, like, this pair of, like, old janky Vans, you know, classics that the, you know, seams are starting to fall apart. So he's like, hey, you got golf shoes? Are you oh good? I'm like, oh, don't worry about me. Were they the checkered Vans? What kind of Vans are we talking about? No, the oh, Slides? classic blacks. No, I, I've, never, I've never been a slip-on Vans guy. That's a, it's a controversial topic, but I don't really like slip-on Vans. Okay, no problem. I'll let it slide. I mean, no pun intended. I'll let it slide. All right, so where you pop a couple Zannies in the parking lot, or what's what time do you have to be to the course? And where did you, where, when did, I mean, no shots of tequila at home or anything like that? You just, where, where does it so all begin? I, I, was a, I worked as a chef. So that's what kind of threw my, my life into this, uh, this repair is like I, and I started working in the kitchen at, oh, at the golf course over the winter, um, you know, fell in love with the chef life. So I was working as a chef downtown Toronto. So I, I, I may have snagged a bottle, uh, went home and, and uh, you know, had a few drinks before I got on the PC, the public transportation and took my way up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had like a bunch of nips, like vodka nips and tequila nips in, in my golf bag. I was prepared. Um, so I was kind of taking them throughout the day. And, and uh, I got to the course maybe like an hour and a half early, which is a- absurd. Um, so we, we get down to the driver range. We check in. We do the whole thing. I'm shanking balls left to right and center. This guy thinks that he's just, you know, made a big old mistake. So, um, you know, I just keep drinking. Just keep, you know, power through it. You know, you know, you know what it's like. You got to. You work your way through your little kinks. You figure it out. I had been two years at this point, like since the last time I golfed. So, you know, I was just figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, fix the shanks, get it going. We still have like 40 minutes of a tee off. So I, I went off and I... Let me interrupt you real quick. You got there an hour and a half early. That is not... That is not... This. Let me just tell you what I respect about you. As an addict, I have a lot of friends. I'm in comedy. I have a lot of friends that are addicts or ex-addicts or in recovery addicts an hour and a half early to golf course for someone who's as deep in it as I think you were at the time still shows your dedication to the golf game. You know what I mean? I appreciate the hell out of that. You're like, yeah, I may have done some drinks at home and then pop two Zannies when I got there, but I'm going to be an hour and a half early because I got to hit the range and I got to roll some putts. Right. Exactly. That was exactly it. And I, even though I had, I had been away from the game, I I still loved it more than anything. Right. You know, the the love comes out and I'm happy you saw that. That's it's true. Like it, Addicts only get excited for things that they actually like in their normal life. So it was uh, it was the only thing I really enjoyed in my normal life that I, I still got excited for. Love it. All right. Go ahead. 
You're shanking on the range. Yeah, so we're, whatever, we're, we're ranging, hitting the ball, finally figure it out. I'm hitting these Mizunos, which were great. I had that two iron, I think it was like a Bobby Jones. It was wonderful. Everything, everything starts to like kind of click in my head. I'm like, this is perfect. So as soon as I got it, I stopped, went up to the putting green, went and grabbed some of the free food, which again, private courses, free buffets, member guests, free food. I can't say free food enough because it was incredible. Um, we start, uh, we start doing that. We're getting, you know, the opening ceremonies and everything and, and we go to tee off. And, you know, as we're walking to the, to the first tee, I, I popped another out of all. So I already taken one. I took a second just to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm hyper focused. I wanted to be focused. Um, you know, at this point I was doing a list like harder drugs, but I chose not to do any harder drugs like quite yet. You know, I was trying to ease off mm-hmm. it for this day. Um, obviously that changes it later on, but, uh, you know, we, we get to the first key. I'm, I'm feeling good. I got my, my janky outfit, my shitty club, and I, uh, proceeded to get my first tee shot out of bounds and I made like a seven or eight on the first hole. So I really felt like an asshole at that point. Um, and I think the guy I was playing with really felt like an apple. Um, you know, I had another nip or two probably. And then as we got to the second hole, I started to feel it. So I, I finished the front nine, like the, the rest of the front nine was pretty uneventful because I tried to take it serious. I think I finished like my, like one under, it was one or two under after the front nine. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling myself. Like, I'm like, this is good. I'm set. Um, as we go make the turn, we had like a 10 minute delay. So in a 10 minute delay, I'm feeling good. So I brought like three and a half, four grams of shrooms yeah. for afterwards, but I was feeling good. So I'm like, I'm going to take them now in like the two and a half hours. Once we finish this round, I'm going to be flying. So when we have this dinner thing later, I'm going to be good. Um, so I took them at the turn, but then once you're sitting there. No, normally for you and you, I mean, cause I feel like mushrooms, it's like a 40 minute to an hour kick in. Were you looking at it like, were these, did you just, were you used to them kicking in later than that? Or were you like, all right, you know what? They'll kick in an hour. We'll be around 13 on the course and I'll just do the last four holes on shrooms. That, that was my exact thought was I, as long as I can make it to like the 13th, 14th hole, I'll probably have a, my score will be really good by then. <laughs> you know, real cocky. I was like, I'll be like two under or stick at one under and I'll, we'll have a good chance here and I can just kind of float on through the last few holes. That was exactly my thought. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I pop them, and then we, we get a, a major rainstorm, which isn't unusual for Toronto. You just kind of get storm out of nowhere. So uh, it ended up being like a two-and-a-half or three-hour rain delay, or like a, a really a overly long rain delay. Again, I was on mushrooms, so I can't tell you the exact amount of time. <laughs> it was long enough for the mushrooms to fully kick in and set in, so yeah. all the croissants I was jamming in my fucking face, those were starting to, like, gather in my stomach. Yeah, Okay. You know, now you're eating, you're so pounding we, we them all down, the course, and you're on mushrooms. Uh, Are you drinking the whole time as well? At two and a half hours, man, that's a long time. And during that time, did this guy call out to you at any point, like like an hour and a half or two hours into the delay, being like, yo, man, are you on, what is with you? Like, did at any point, did he question the Adderall or shrooms? Like, were you showing signs or were you just that great of an addict at that point that you could hide anything? Oh, I was just a pretty good addict. And I, I, he didn't know that I was taking anything. He knew I was drinking a bit, but he didn't know I was taking the nip. Um, and I, I like, I literally, I sat, I would go into the, into like the little banquet hall, grab a bunch of food and I'd go hang out with the caddies. So I was really mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm really keeping myself away from it i love that i love the 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 caddy hang dude that's where it's at always anyway for me so go ahead all right so you're back out there in the course now rain delays over you're two and a half hours or probably an hour and a half into these mushrooms kicking in yeah so we're 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 back out you know a certain tenth hole i'm feeling it already i'm i'm on a different fucking planet I'm like, I'm spaceman. I think I, I, the exact term that I always used was I was like a, I was like an outfielder chasing a butterfly around in the outfield when I was like playing t-ball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't even know what I shot. I don't even think I finished every hole. I think I was just kind of floating. Um, so I'm, I'm cruising. We're cruising. <laughs> you know, the caddies are having a great time. They were smoking weed and like during the rain delay. So they, I knew they were, they were having a blast as well. Were you smoking weed with them? No, I don't smoke weed. I never really liked smoking weed. As crazy as that sounds. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. You're like, listen, anything but weed. Okay, cool. I, All right, go. Yeah, ne- never got into weed. It's a weird thing. Um, so, yeah, so we're like at the 15th, 16th hole around there. I have no idea what my score is at this point. Like, I, it's probably dead. And, uh, you know, everything starts coming up. At this point, it's been probably like four hours since I've 
taking the mushrooms. So, you know, four hours with mushrooms is long enough for it to kind of get through you and, and start getting you the, the farts and the shit. So I, uh, I'm holding it in, I'm holding it in. And eventually I just couldn't anymore. So on the tee box, we're waiting for the group in front of us to go. And I'm sitting there like clutching my gut. And I just like, I mosey on off into the corner. And again, I cannot stress enough that I'm on a private golf course designed by, by Donald Ross and like the, and it opened in like 1895. It's absurd that I was there. And, uh, <laughs> and I respect, that's the thing. I respect golf so much. I love golf so much. I respect Donald Ross like so much and all of his courses. And it's like, you know, a bucket list thing to play those places. And I like, I, you know, I was just a total disaster back then though. Um, so yeah, I, I just made my way off the, off the tee deck and there's like million dollar houses around the, the tees and I, I found a little tree and I, I thought I pulled my pants down in time, but I didn't. And I just started shitting and I just shit like down my legs, down my <laughs> shoes. Like it was everywhere. I'm wiping myself up. And I just, I had to play the rest of the fucking round. <laughs> this asshole. And I'm like, I'm like pouring water on myself, wiping up. And I'm like, I, I can't. And I, I got, I, I got a dodge so quick once I, once we finished up the round. Like what, 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 what happened when you came back from the woods? I mean, you must have stunk. Did he say anything? Your b- buddy's brother? I have not talked to him or his brother since then. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, that was pretty safe to say. I think we all were kind of like, yeah. They were like rich kids and stuff, so they didn't want to confront me. Are you think. kidding me? You shit your pants. You're going to be like, oh, you knew about that? He's like, yeah, I knew about that. I mean, what if he got kicked out of the club? Do you know if he's still a member there? He is still a member there. I do know he's still a member there. I know he got no flack. I think that's why I never reached out again. I was a, a scumbag for a few more years after that. Um, but I wasn't really friends with him. I was just kind of, I was friends with his brother and, and his brother. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on. I don't, I, again, I haven't talked to him since I was 21, so. I, I should have made amends. It's something that I have brought up. Again, now that I'm sober, you start to notice those things. You know, you look back in your life and like, oh shit, like what the fuck was I doing? And that's one of the, I mean, that's a regret I have that I didn't make amends with him. But at the same time, you know, fuck. I'm just happy I survived, I think. I mean, let's be honest about it, dude. Yeah, dude, first of all, again, congrats on getting sober because I know that can be really tough. Trust me, I, like I said, I'm in comedy and. I can't tell you the amount of people that we've lost in comedy because they are unable to get sober. But um, first of all, and he paid you, dude. This guy, first of all, you, you know, where's the honor in that? Who's paying people to come play in their member guests? I think he kind of deserved what he got. You know what I mean? You know, I'm happy you said that because I, I I never really knew what member guests were because I didn't grow up on like a private course. I grew up on like a pretty, you know, standard, you know, muni course. That was great. I love it. Um, but I, I didn't really know that it wasn't, it was weird to like kind of give people perks. So like he was going to give me, he gave me 200 bucks cash and the money for the like transportation to get there. And he was like, and obviously the drink, everything's are free. And he was like, if we win, I don't know what he was getting. If they win, I don't know how those things work, honestly. But he was like, if we win, you know, we'll, we'll, there'll be some kickback. I was like, sure, whatever. Um, so I, you know, there's a moral aspect to that too. But I think that some of those Richie, like, I feel like that, that goes on. Like, I feel like they pay for, like, a ringer to come in just so they look like a, like a top dog. Like, the, you know, the old man lawyer, they're, like, pay for, like, some fucking scratch golfer to come in and dominate. Let me tell you something. I play in a uh, charity event every year. And one of the organizers every year, like this year, he called ahead to the course we were playing at, got the head pro, and then invited the guy to play in his foursome. Had the head pro. And we beat them in extra holes. So I was like, yeah, take that. But uh, I don't, I think it's, it's, I think you're right, man. I think in golf, sometimes when it comes to these kind of member guests or whatever, people are like, they'll do whatever it takes. Everybody just wants the goddamn trophy, bro. Of course, he's going to kick you the money. He doesn't give a shit. He just wants to win the trophy. A hundred percent. Yeah. He just wants to win the trophy. And he was, I know he was like a younger member at the time. So I was 21. He would have been. Only like 31, 32 ish. I feel like it's like, oh, look at me. I'm the club champ. I'm going to be the member guest champion forever kind of thing. Yeah, totally, bro. And if you had crushed and you guys had won, he would have had you back every single year. Uh, let me ask you this. So now you're back. You're playing again. What's your handicap at right now? So I, I started playing again in 2020, but I had you know some back issues. So I, this is my first kind of full year plan again. I'm down to a 3 1. Good God. So I'm, I'm kind of regaining it. It's, I have my ups and downs, obviously. What about yourself? I played it with seven, but uh, I mean, I have not, I stopped keeping an index like a year and a half ago and I just stuck to a seven wherever I, whenever I play with friends or tournaments or whatever. And uh, so I, I bet I'm closer to a, 
I'm probably closer to a, a nine or a ten now, but uh, a three. I've never even sniffed. My greatest round ever, I think, is a seventy-six. Uh, definitely not on average. That's pretty. That's pretty tight, though. Like that's you know I, like there's such a small. I I credit it to like golfing at a young age and and golfing at a high level at a young age and putting so much time into it because it's so hard. Once you're like get to a certain age and you're not practicing every day, it's it's so hard to like you know, find something and stick to it. It's so hard to find those swing thoughts. And unless you have like endless money to like put into coaching and stuff, you know, but at that point, are you even having fun? Like, is that even fun? If you're like a, if you're like an older person who's just like putting all your money into being a golfer. I mean, I'll tell you right now, if I was rolling in it and I didn't have kids and didn't have responsibility, I would definitely put money into it to be great. Just to go out every day and play. I'd be entering you know, there are dudes that hit the circuit of like member guest tournaments. It's, 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 you got to have little goals, right? I, I started a fucking Instagram page just to try to push myself a little bit more. So it's, it's working its way slowly. Through I it. love it, man. Well, well, hit us up on Instagram. We'll give you a follow. We'll plug that, man. Thanks for hopping on with us. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Anytime, man. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're killing it. I love it. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Let me say this about Patrick. Okay. I had a podcast for years called the Crab Feast Podcast. Like I've mentioned it before. I'll, I'm sure I'll mention it. You can go back and listen. And we had comedians and actors come on and tell their craziest stories. Clearly what Patrick just told us is wild. Okay. Wild and amazing and hilarious. And for me, it's most hilarious because he sobered up and got control of his life. I mean, it would have been anyway, but I... I just love that he was able to take control and be able to look back and uh, oh my God, I don't know. I don't know if I would have wanted to be playing with him that day. I wouldn't have mind playing against him though in that foursome so I could see it, experience it, but not have him like taking my score down because God knows what his score was on that back nine. And I just love that he thought he was going to, oh God, the rain delay, two and a half hour rain delay in your face. Uh Anyway, if you have fun stories like that, uh, I, you know whether you're sobered up or not, share them. We love hearing these stories. Um, so please keep calling in one eight three three my golf line. Um, and I want to I want to uh, to top that. The only way to top that is to bring in one of the greatest comedians working today. Uh, he's a golfer. He's never beat me at golf, um, which I know is an issue for him. But he's crushing me in the comedy game. So I'm sure he'll be able to deal with that. Um, he's got a great podcast called the Nate Land Podcast. Uh, I think it's great. I've never listened to it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of his work. Um, but I do enjoy his stand-up. Um, and I love beating him on the golf course. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nate Bargatze. Golf clap. Golf clap. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. I think I, yeah, I like amateur golfer. I think that's that. That felt good. I mean, everybody's really but Everybody is. You know, I'm sure you know this, but uh, Bob Hope used to say, "I'm a professional golfer. I just do comedy to pay the bills." That yeah. literally is you, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's the goal, man. Is uh, just to play. I was even like today. It's like a drug addict where you're like, I'm gonna play today. And yeah. you're trying to find how to play. I'm like, you know, my luck, like, luckily my daughter has dance. And so uh, my wife's got to take her to dance. And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't want to be just sitting at home, you know. And so a little three o'clock round. Will uh, you play 18 or nine? I think I'll get 18 in. She won't get done with dance till like seven. So I'll easily get it in. But you know, I, you know, I, the place I'm at at three o'clock, like, I, you know, I can probably play in three hours. Oh, that's dope. three and a half. You know, I love it. If your wife comes home, she's like, yeah, Nate, I was talking to the dance school and we have her signed up dance every single day, three to seven. You're like, I, I just think she needs the practice. That's all. She needs to get after it. You know, what does she, she want to be something? Yeah. Yeah. I would. Oh, I mean, it would be like she has dance like she does dance and tumble or something and. Uh, yeah, so it just works out like those are just, but I, I'll find anything. And I, I like, I start looking at this week cause I'm playing tomorrow and I'm, I think I'm playing Friday. So it's like you start and then you're looking at Thursday. I'm like, I should probably back off Thursday just to, but will you just go and chip or putt or like, what are you working on right now in your game? Because what are you playing to? You playing to like a four right now? No, no, I'm back up to a six. It's been bad, but 
We're about to go. We're about to it's, go down. Put it this I, way. I, if you're out there and you're going to play Nate Bargatze in a round of golf, look at his tour schedule. If he's touring, you know his handicap is going up. If he's not on the road, then you know he's back down. Because, yeah. dude, for a minute, you were, like, taking lessons every day. You were playing, like, 36. Was that during, like, the pandemic before you started doing the outside yeah. tour? Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, the pandemic got, was uh, pandemic was one of the greatest times of my life. And <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, uh, I feel you though. It, it was for golfers. I mean, that was like you were easy. Like we're outside, dude. And I was luckily my club. They did not close because they were just like you couldn't get carts or anything, but like you could just go walk. And uh, I know some courses closed, but so ours didn't. So I mean, I was like every day was like, all right, I'm gonna go out there and go walk and. Uh, and it it was great. And then so I'm doing I'm doing some lessons again right now. I'm working on uh, uh, I'm like stuck at that six six four, and you know where it's like you got you basically have like a scratch golfer in you, but you also have a twenty handicap in you. Dude, that is uh, that is it to a T. What is your wait? What's your lowest round ever? Uh, even par. I've shot even par twice. My best round, I would say, is during the club championship. I've only played in one. During the club championship, uh, I, I shot uh, one over, and that was pro- that was probably my best round over the even part, just because of the how hard it was. And what did what did you what place did you come in at one over at your club championship? Uh oh, dude. The, I mean, the that next day I was in. Uh, the next day I was in uh I was in the final group and then I shot like an eighty something. I mean I fell apart. So I ended up I made top ten out of you know, out of twelve. And so there uh you know, there's top ten out of thirty, to be truthful. So I was happy about that. Made top ten and but I shot eighty dude. The next day I got back to back quads. Shut up. I li- I hit into the yeah, I was on 18, and I just hit in, and I lost my ball. And we found a ball, but I forgot what ball I was playing. And the guy was like, is this title is four? And I was like, no, nah, I'm playing a three. And then I go back and have to drop, and I drop a four. And I'm like, that was my ball up there. And they're like, well, you've already dropped. So <laughs> you had to. So that ended up being a quad. Then I got another quad the next hole. But then I part out. So that was good. That is insane. First of all, this is the thing that I love about golf is that. All right. So you play a six. You're a six. You can shoot even par at your club championship. There's guys probably that are like plus twos and they couldn't even they would get their ass kicked on the web.com tour. You know what I mean? Like they wouldn't even they'd be shooting in the high 80s. And it's just like the level of like what those guys are doing on Sunday that. This is what I love about golf is we can watch these guys on Sunday or whatever, Thursday, and what they do on a course, then we can go play that course. You know, you can go play Torrey Pines. You can go play some of these courses, and then we get to see what we can do. Like, you ever, like, I know holes. Like, I've played number one at Torrey Pines that I birdied, and I'm like, and I see guys like bogey. I'm like, you bogey? God, I birdied it, baby. Yeah. Yeah, like this is what I do. Yeah, there. It's the consistency that they. You know, I've got to play with a bunch of uh, pro golfers. Yeah, and, I know. Uh, one of. My, yeah, yeah, Jay, I do. One's you. You're I mean, the, is that you're your... the best comedian golfer I've no. played with? Well, you've never played with. Um, I think so. Court. Yeah, have you played with Court? No. He's the best comedy golfer. So. You know what I mean, but if you go like quality of comedian to quality of golfer i'm probably the best i would say so actually you out i'm coming oh, I, you outweigh I'm me gonna in come, comedy you outweigh me in just life you know whoa whoa uh, whoa <laughs> wait a minute so hold on a sec i want I want to, your uh, i want your outdoor showers so I know what I'm looking at. Dude, let me come to <laughs> let me come build you one in Nashville. Let's get you an outdoor shower, Bagazzi. Why would you yeah, well, you can come down here too with me at any time. I would love you to come down because we can go play. Um uh, we uh 
what was that? Tell me, uh, I, don't, I don't play with these pros. So when you do play with them, so like I, you know, I, I know like Finau and Jason Day pretty well, and then uh, I'm John Augustine, who's on the Corn Ferry Tour right now, and I, we play. I play with him probably the. Uh, I, I do play with him the most, and it's and it's just it's insane, dude. They just don't you I you like forget that they they just don't ever miss. No. Like you're, I've learned the pros. Like our balls curve more, and theirs just don't curve, and so it goes straight. And they're like their cut is like just a drop on the right, and like my cut's like a hard, mm-hmm. and I'm like cut it right down the middle, and then you're you know it's like just different shapes. It's pretty wild. Let me ask you this, because I've never played with a pro. I mean. I've played with dudes that are sticks. Like I played with a kid who played at Northwestern and he's won the club championship at LACC where they're going to have the open. Right. So he's a stick and his drive. I mean, I don't even sniff it. Like when you're playing with Fina or day, how, how ridiculous is it compared to what you're doing? Cause you can, you hit the ball Uh, well off the tee. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just gone. I mean, their ball is just, they're in, I remember the first time playing with Fina and I mean, I swear he would. Be, there's holes he's going to be 100 yards farther than you. I mean, it's just so much. It's just another planet, and you're never near them. I mean, you would have to hit. They'd have to hit like a five wood or, or maybe you know, you'd have to get it. Like it's it's just there's so much farther. I remember there's a they play. I just heard a story about one of the guys playing with them. And uh, they had a guy that would always go check the ball on the green. They'd get to the green, there'd be one ball, and the, the one guy would always go look at it. And they're like, "It's never going to be your ball. Don't ever go like it's you're playing with a pro. So just if there's one ball on the green, assume your ball's not on the green. You oh don't need God. to go look. Yeah. Yours is not going to be there. That's insane. You know what? So like, if in all the golf you played, have you ever had a hole in one? I've never had one, and people like I'm amazed that people have hit hole in ones. I've never even come close. Oh yeah, I've had. Uh, well, I mean, I've had some be pretty close, but I, I have one, but it's a par three, and it was on a par three course. Uh, uh, yeah. And so it's like I just don't count it, and it was crazy because I hit one in. How far was and it? Then, uh, 122 yards, I believe. Okay. This was, you know, I mean, I was, I had to be in my 20s. And so we're playing with my dad and like my family, my cousin. And uh, I hit one in, then my cousin hit one behind me, and his was on the lip, which was crazy. So it was almost same shot, back. same hole, same hole. Yeah. And people saw that shot, they didn't see mine. So these people, it was like, uh, like a part three course, like in between like apartments in Florida or something, you know, like some yeah thing like that. And uh, they saw his shot, and they're like, "Ah, oh, they went crazy!" And I was like, "Mine's in the hole," and they didn't, no one saw that. <laughs> hey guys, what about guys? Yeah, I was like, I mean, "It's in the hole." So I haven't. It's been close, uh, but I, yeah, I see. There's some people that just get them all the time. I, you know, I but feel I, love, I feel like we're on the verge. I, I feel like I, 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 I'm good. you're such a purist that you're like, "No, nah, it's not a real golf course," so I'm not counting it yeah it's a part three it's tough i always think you shouldn't have to explain it i always think what if you get a hole in one and you don't finish the round like you you got to finish the round because the well i mean you could just come back the next day i guess so what is tell me right now what's what are you on top of your game on right now like what's the best part of your game uh my putting's been good <clears throat> Yeah. Lately. And so that's probably been saving me a lot. Uh, the driver's bad, but my irons are getting better. I mean, I'm really working on getting that, hitting that kind of straight shot, that kind of barely drop to the left or right shot and not big cuts or draws. And uh, I was bowing my wrist back early, so I'm working on like keeping it straight and I got to work on the release. But it's like I can see the hard part is like when you get into it like this, you can, I can see. Like you see the how easy golf can be. Not easy, but you know you're see you know what a good shot feels like. That's your worst mistake. Yeah, is once you learn what a good shot feels like, and then you're just chasing that shot where it feels like nothing. It feels like you're just pitching 
like you're chipping a seven iron 170 mm -hmm. and you're like, I didn't even swing. Mm -hmm. And so once you know what that feels like, it's, uh, it's tough because you keep searching for it. But that's what I'm working on now is just to get that consistent. See, because that's the thing, bro. I, I might be a six handicap and shoot a 77, but I won't hit one pure golf shot. You know what I mean? It's pure for what my game is. But like a pro would be like, oh, man, you're not even. I remember I took lessons for a minute and I had Mizuno irons at the time. And the, and the guy like every like 50th shot, he'd be like, did you hear that? And I'm like, yeah, he goes, that's the sound of a pure shit, a pure shot. And you're like, oh yeah, how do I, how do I do? And it's like, you would have to work so hard. I would have to like relearn golf yeah, to start hitting it pure, which is what you've been doing. What's your, uh, what's your fairway sand shot sitch like? Uh, fair. Oh, fairway. Uh, I actually, not been, it's not been bad. I've actually hit some really good shots. Uh, with a fairways uh, sand, and it's it's, I I don't even know if I would know how to tell you to, how I do it. I was gonna ask, what's your approach? Like everyone's like, you act like you're hitting off of, of a piece of glass. I don't dig down. Yeah. Uh, and so that I've been trying to pick it clean. Sure. But I've also done some where I try to like just almost like uh like I'm just trying to hit like a knockdown shot. Like I'm just trying to smash the ball first. Yeah. And I'll put it to the back of my stance. And it'll come off. It, but every time I'm behind it, I never feel like this is going to be great. It's always like, all right, let's see what happens. Come like, on, baby. Yeah. I know. And it works out. I don't, but it's like I, I know with that shot, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm doing this. And I wish I did, because then I would feel more confident mm -hmm. in it. All right. So let me ask you this. You're on tour. You gotta fucking excuse me. You have a damn tour bus. Are you taking clubs with you and are you playing? Are you like, I mean, you're like, you're pulling up to like stadiums and uh, outdoor arenas and fe you have like, uh, what are you doing? Are you bringing like a putting green? Tell me the situation. I know you got something with you. What do you, what's your deal? Yeah, I, I have clubs. I have, a, I have a set of clubs that I leave on the bus. And so uh, I go and I'll set up and play. I'll sometimes, uh, Sometimes you won't be able to come home. Like recently, we were I was in Austin, Texas, and we had to get to Milwaukee. So our the bus driver can drive, I think, between eight to ten hours. So like you just find a spot eight hours, and I'll drive through the night. I'll wake up somewhere. So I woke up in Big Cedar Lodge, which is like in Branson, basically, and they have like five courses there. Unreal place for people that want to go golf. Tiger Woods course, that's that Pine Valley course, oh, yeah. and uh, it's an awesome place. And so I woke up there and I played uh, that day. And so I'll do that some is like just like if you have a day, you know, I'm, I can't really go home and I got to be instead of getting on some weird flights. I'm like, all right, just drive there. I'll wake up there. I'll go golf during the day, sleep back on the bus and I wake up the next day at at the show. Uh, so you kind of just plan some stuff like that. I don't get a golf a ton on the show days. I've learned, you know, there's a point. Me and Nick Thune were talking about it one time, mm -hmm. where it's like when you you know when you have a show and you're playing and you get you get to like 14 and then you're kind of like you're thinking about the show a little bit you know you're just not really focused on the golf and because you just you feel like you're like I got to go do something I, oh, I I need to go I would have work. anxiety I would never like yeah. people used to say that to me they're like the only way I could do it is if I'm in the same time zone that I live in. So I can get mm. up like really early and get like a 7 a.m. tea time where I'm done by like 2. I can go back to the hotel. I can chill out. I can relax. I can go over my set. I'm glad to hear you say that because I'm sitting here thinking like these any guy that can do that, especially the level of shows that you're doing, get out of here. That's just like I would it, it ruins it. It ruins it. And it it's it's I, you know, you can tell uh that you're not giving it all on your show and you're like well you know the comedy is the reason i can even get to do all this stuff and so you're like i i gotta treat it with more respect than just thinking like i can just go play you know then there could be a corporate gig here there's gonna be situations like you said where you're like yeah i could I, i'm fine like mm -hmm. kind of mentally running up right to it but overall you're it, it's just i've learned uh the stress comes from being late, feeling like you're being rushed, 
Uh, and so you're like, you're just trying not to do that. So I can't it's easier even, just to wait. I can't even imagine what Nate Bargatze rushed looks like. What is it? It just probably looks like everything else. You looks looking like, like yeah. you have two hours versus having two minutes probably looks exactly the same. It's the, yeah, it's 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 the, it's the same. It's just you know my insides are going crazy. Let me ask you this because I know you do a ton of corporate gigs, and it's I know this isn't golf related, but I'd love to know: Are you? Oh, what is the craziest corporate gig you've ever done? Like, not like hell gig, but like awesome, rad, amazing gig. Are you open to sharing anything like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, the one I did, I've done a few. Uh, Son of a bitch. I did. Uh, <laughs> One I did was on, uh, so you know Paul Allen, yeah. uh, and, and used to own the Seahawks, invented computers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, did a gig, I, did a, I did a show, he did a private cruise, and he hired me to be the comic on it, and they went to, uh, Viet, so we flew to, Viet, me and my wife flew to Vietnam and got on the cruise ship. How'd you get on the cruise ship? Uh, we just flew and then to Vietnam and then took a car to the cruise ship. I mean, okay. he just, it, they just hired me. Because there's a bunch of bands on it. I mean, the people on this thing are uh, the people on this show. I was the only one like kind of hired. The rest are like the idea of it was it's all these people that are like very wealthy or famous. And it's trying to let them have like a normal vacation. Paul Allen was a very sweet man. He yeah. paid for all everybody's trip. And uh, he was just trying to let people like kind of network. And you, oh, you should meet this person. You're very nice. And they're very nice. And so, I mean, there's like oscar directors on this there's guys that uh invented computers with with paul allen uh it was like joe walsh uh quentin tarantino was on it uh uh jeff goldblum like it's it, it was just a crazy amount of mix of people that are on it yeah and so i i came on i did the show the show went great where where did you do the show what was the is there like a theater the crew, it was a, he rented out a cruise ship so it's a cruise ship that holds you know, 2,500 people and it had 150 people on it. Ooh. And, uh, and so Derek trucks and Susan Tedeschi, we became really good friends with them. They were there. And so I did a, the comedy show and it went really well. And they were like, look, we'd like you. I was supposed to leave like the next day and they go, just stay the rest of the trip. So me and my wife stayed for, you know, we were on it for nine days. And I mean, you're just with everybody. And they're, you know, I'm watching in the last night, they wanted me to do comedy again. And he was flying in one more performer. So I was going to open for that performer and it was Stevie Wonder. Oh so my it was, God. Uh, so it was, I went up and then Stevie Wonder uh, went up after me. I didn't meet, I didn't really get to meet Stevie like, you know, but uh, he, I, I went out, but I watched Stevie just sitting with Joe Walsh and just me and him. Just watch the Stevie oh Wonder, God. and then from that, I did Steve. I did Joe Walsh's seventieth birthday party. Uh, oh my God! At, and that was that was just like doing it. He likes comedy, and that that one it was me, Joe Walsh, and Ringo Starr were the performers. <laughs> what and did Ringo do? He sang. I mean, they, he got up and sang at the end. But I when I was performing, I'm like looking. Uh, Brad Paisley was there, mm-hmm. and I know Brad. And so Brad, right when I walk in, I go up to Brad, and he's like, he goes, what, the, what are you doing here? <laughs> like he was, he just made, he, because it did. It made no sense that I would be there. Yeah. And then I had to do comedy. And, I mean, no one's expecting comedy. Uh, Joe likes comedy. And Tom Hanks was there. Like, it was – so you're – it took me a minute to, like, kind of get it. And then I got it. And then it went, you know, went as good as it could go in a situation like that. And then, and I was just looking at Ringo. I mean, Ringo Starr just got his glasses on, just sitting there, like watching. And like, uh, so, but it was good. Then we sit there and we watched the rest of the show and, uh, and hung out. And it, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, this is the thing that people, I don't know if most people who aren't in comedy understand. There are maybe, I don't know, six comedians that can go into those kind of environments and do well because, like, your comedy. It just allows people to sit and enjoy. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like you could do that. Maybe Ryan Hamilton could do that. Maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe Brian yeah. Regan could do that. But like, you guys have an ability that's unbelievable. Didn't you tell me like you and Tarantino were hanging out in the kitchen on that boat? Yeah, he was. Uh, when I went up the second, 
time because because the first time this was a few years ago, so it's not like I uh, I I might have had my half hour on Netflix, and that was it. But it was but you know it's like I I go out I do my I'm do, I'm doing one show I think so I I do the greatest of hits of all time so yeah. you pull all the stops out and so when they asked me to perform again I'm like. I'm like, God, I don't, you know, like, I don't want to bomb now. And so I'm having to go back and listen to like my old album and remember old jokes. And I was like kind of nervous about it. And everybody, everybody was very nice. And they're like, dude, it's going to be great. And I was like, I hope. And then Tarantino, I, so I get done, I go in the bathroom and I get done. Tarantino's in there and he, go, and he sees me, he goes, did you go up? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, and he goes, and he started laughing. He goes, I'm just kidding, dude. It was great. I watched the whole thing. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Dude, very, that is so funny. funny. That's such yeah. a comic. That's a, such a comic move. Yeah, there's two comic moves. It's like, yo, when are you going on? You're like, I just went. The other one is, hey, man, after you see someone, like, you'll get them next time. You know what I mean? You'll get them next time. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on. I know the Nate Land podcast, if anybody wants to, if they're not already listening to your podcast or go see you on the road, you're on the road for the rest of the year, right? Yeah, yeah. Rest of the year, uh, we're I'm taping a special in September. Nice. And, Where are you taping it? Uh, Phoenix, the Celebrity Theater. Oh, uh, it's I in did the that with you. Yes, yes. That place Going is awesome. Here. Do you love that in the that round? Awesome. I do. We just did one in Cape Cod, your part yeah. of town. Have you, ever, have you ever done the Melody Tent, or do mm -hmm. you know that one? I know it's, of it. But they yeah. Have, yeah, it's that's in the round. Uh, and it's it's fun. Uh, the round's very fun. I mean, everybody's around you, and it make and for me who doesn't move a lot, it makes me move more because you kind of have to. So I like it for that reason. Uh, but it's good. And yeah. So yes, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And then yeah, we'll be touring till the end of uh, the end of the year. Uh, we're hitting all the. We're going to Casper, Wyoming. Nice. Uh, love uh, Fargo. You know all like all the stops. I love it, man. You know what? The one thing I, the first time I ever did in the round, and I've only done it a couple times, is I, I'm a guy who moves a lot. And I literally was just like, oh, what about these guys? What about these guys? What about these guys? What about these guys? And I just kept going yeah. round and round. And I was like, dude, slow down, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? But uh, I love it, man. That's going to be rad, dude. I love you, buddy. I appreciate you coming on, man. I love you. Yeah, dude. Anytime. I think this was a. A great first – I mean, put it this way. Anytime you have Nate Bargatze on a show, it's a great show. That's just the bottom line. This is what we're doing. If if you go on The Tonight Show and it's got Jim Carrey, it's going to be a great show. You're going to listen to a podcast and it's going to have Nate Bargatze. It's a great show. And I appreciate Nate. I appreciate everyone calling in and sharing the podcast. This is our first episode. Uh, I think I did a great job. I know JoJo did a great job. I want to thank JoJo. Call in 1-833-MY-GOLF-LINE. Something you're out there, you're having fun, you remember a story, call in. Whatever it is, we'll talk about it. We'll make it fun if it's not as fun as we had hoped. You get what I'm saying? Um, and before we go, I want to let you know that uh, every now and then you got to take a mulligan. Every now and then you got to take one. So we got this voicemail and we're going to give this guy a mulligan. Play it, JoJo. Hey, Larson. Uh, I... I don't know what a handicap is. I guess you would call it the handicap in my, in my wrist, but I honestly just want to know what you think is so cool about golf. It's honestly the laziest sport of all sports, if you'd even call it that. I'd rather watch Spud Rose and Carlos Barton on a 15-round match than play golf. It just seems like a sport for old men. And honestly, I wish you'd quit encouraging young boys to play so my kids' future have a chance of some masculinity. I've honestly never played before, but I have a list of more boring stuff to do, like watching paint dry or volunteering at the DMV. But yeah, uh, like I said, my name is Brandon. Brandon. First of all, let me tell you how basic you are, Brandon. You said watch paint dry. You know, what, what are you, you're using a term? You want to be original? Come up with your own thing. The volunteer at the DMV was great. Why didn't you lead with that? Lose the lose the the paint dry, bro. That's not yours. The DMV, maybe that's yours. Also, if you think 
the UFC is making you more masculine because you're comfortable watching two dudes beat the shit out of each other. You're wrong, bro. You know what makes you masculine, buddy? Owning who you are. Being comfortable around people that are different than you. Uh, Knowing that your point of view is not the only point of view. Being able to access your feelings, bro. Okay, because clearly they're pushed down. You know what the great thing is about Brandon, by the way? I bet he'd love golf. He'd love it. And guess what? I'm not one of these guys like, it's a sport, bro. I don't care if you call it a sport, a hobby, a parlor game. I don't care. I don't care. I don't get held up with it, okay? Because I love it. I'm going to continue to do it. There are millions of people doing it. And Brandon, what sports are you even good at anyway, bro? You would have a lot of fun out there. Is it an old man sport? I don't know. You know what's you know what old men do? You know what old men do? They sit in recliners and they smoke cigars listening to jazz. You don't want to do that, Brandon? I would do that all day. You know what else old men do? They 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 take their time making a dinner in the kitchen for themselves and then they eat outside in a in a folding chair. All right? Listening to jazz. So, my friend, I'm giving you a mulligan. I'm giving you a chance to reassess yourself and ask yourself, like, is there space in my life that I could enjoy the UFC and also something else I know nothing about? Am I a little scared of golf? Because it looks like fun, but I don't know how to say it because I only hang out with meatheads. Do I need... To widen my friend circle so that I incorporate people that have other interests than me. Listen, you, I don't watch UFC. It's not my thing. I've never been into fighting. I've never been in a fight. It, I have zero interest. The other night I went to the Dodger game and up in the top balcony, two guys were having a fist fight and everyone in the stadium was turned and watching except me. And I just kept going, game's on the field. Game's on the field because I don't give a shit if the people are so dumb and illogical that you can't go to a baseball game and not get in a fist fight with someone. Raising your children to think that's something they need to do is idiotic. You want to teach your kid to defend himself? Go for it. But teach him to use words so he doesn't have to get in situations. Because guess what? Some guys use words. Then other guys push. Then other guys punch. Then other dudes kick. And then some dude grabs a bottle and bashes you in the head. Whatever. Whatever it is. The world is melting. Okay? There's no middle class. (laughs) You know what I mean? Aren't there bigger issues in the world than making sure your son is able to bludgeon someone's face into the ground, Brandon? But I could hear it in your voice, bro. I could hear that you want a little bit of change. And that's why you reached out. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that call. And I think what you should do is go to the driving range one day. Go get some old clubs. Go out and hit a little bit. And then call us back in a couple months and let us know how it goes. That's what we're about here at the Golf Line, baby. one my golf line Thank you for coming for the pilot episode. The first episode in the books, baby. Uh... We'll be out every single week. We're going to have guests. Some week we won't have guests. But call in. I'm Jay Larson. This is The Golf Line. Number, please. Golf Line, Golf Line. Calling on the Golf Line. For your swing, for your swing. Golf Line, Golf Line. Got you calling on the Golf Line.